Hello and welcome. I'm your host, David Hoffman, and in this episode of Assembly Language 101, we'll be writing code to control a three-lead bicolor LED. You can download the source code for this episode as well as for previous episodes from MagiDavid.com. To make life a little easier, we'll be modifying the code used in the previous two-lead bicolor LED episode. Now, since a three-lead bicolor LED has two anode connections and a common cathode connection, we actually have more control over the colors that can be displayed. But first, let's modify the code so we can demonstrate the different colors we can create in a basic on and off scenario. Let's begin by hooking up the LED to the MCU or the Mini 28A, whichever you are using, by inserting the tri-lead LED into the breadboard. Next, connect the red anode of the LED to RA0 with a 390 ohm resistor and connect the green anode of the LED to RA1 with a 390 ohm resistor. Now, connect the center lead to ground with a short length of wire. I'm using a Pick Kit 2, but a Pick Kit 3 will work just fine. Okay, let's begin by modifying the port labels to LED1 red and LED1 green. Now we need to modify the routines to turn the LEDs on and off. So let's move down to where our subroutines are defined. Okay, so let's change LED1 underscore red to LED1 underscore on. Remove the bit clear F and let's add a header section to help identify this section of code. Let's do the same thing for LED1 underscore green. Okay, now let's add two routines to turn each color off. Okay, since we don't need the LED1 off routine anymore, we can go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, now let's update the main routine to reflect the changes we've made. So we need to change the first call to LED1 underscore red underscore on. Now after the pause routine, let's add... I've added the second pause routine to slow down the rate the colors will change, just so we can see them easier. Now change the call LED1 underscore green to LED1 underscore green on. Add the lines LED1 underscore pause and LED1 green off. Let's get rid of this line. Now let's see what happens when we turn on the red and green LEDs at the same time. So let's add the following code. And finally, let's turn both LEDs off before we loop back around. Okay, let's compile the code and then program the MCU. As you can see, the LED first goes red, then green, and then a yellowish orange. When we have both the red and green LEDs on at the same time, the colors mix and give us a yellowish orange. Pretty cool, huh? Let's take a quick look at a setup that mixes the different colors of this LED using potentiometers. What we have here are two 250 ohm pots and two 200 ohm resistors. The 200 ohm resistors are here to prevent excessive current from damaging the LEDs when the pots are near zero resistance. Now, if I turn both pots all the way down, we get that yellowish orange. But when I start turning the left pot up, the color starts shifting towards green. That's because as the resistance increases, the amount of red light coming from the red LED decreases, slowly shifting the color towards green. By mixing varying amounts of light frequencies, we can generate additional colors with a two-color LED. 
So how do we replicate this using code in a digital environment? Let's find out. OK, since we can't control the voltage each LED is receiving, we need another way to control how much light each LED is generating. To do this, we'll be using pulse width modulation, or PWM for short. So for each refresh cycle of 256 loops, we'll be controlling when an LED is off and when an LED is on. PWM allows us to control how much the green LED's light mixes with the red LED's light, and vice versa. And this in turn will allow us to create a lot of different colors. We are going to be making a lot of changes to the code. So, let's begin by getting rid of the pause routines. We won't be using these anymore. OK, let's add the following lines to the label definitions section. I'm going to copy these two lines and replicate them three more times. And now we want to change this to red. These are the four colors we'll be generating with our LED. These labels define the refresh rate of each LED for a desired color. We'll discuss this in greater detail later in this video. Let's change the name of this variable to LED underscore CLR underscore count. Let's change this to LED underscore temp R and add LED underscore temp green. OK, now we need to get rid of all the code in the main routine, except for for the bank select port A and the go to main. Now up here in the start area, we want to add the lines clear F, LED color, count, and clear F, LED, loop, just to make sure that our count registers are clear. Now let's create the subroutines we'll need to control the LED and generate additional colors. We'll call this next subroutine LED update and it will be responsible for refreshing the LED's current color. So let's start by copying our header. OK, let's step through this routine and take a look at each command and what it's doing. First, we increment LED clear count and store the new value back in LED clear count. Next, we assume that the red LED is going to be off. This line copies the current contents of the register LED temp R into the working register. Next, the value in the working register is subtracted from the value in the register LED underscore clear underscore count and the result is stored back in W. It's very important that the result is stored in W. If it's stored in F, then the contents of the register LED clear count will be destroyed and we won't get the correct color on the LED. This loop does nothing more than count up continuously and we use its value to determine if an LED should be on or off. Now, the subtraction we just did has affected status register flags and we can check those flags to find out if LED1 temp underscore R is equal to or less than LED clear count or greater than LED clear count. To find out, we test the carry bit on the status register. When doing subtraction, if the carry bit is clear, then the value in W is greater than the value in register F. And when the carry bit is set, then the value in W is less than or equal to the value in register F. So, if the carry bit is set, then the value in the working register is greater than the value in LED clear temp, and we skip the next command. 
so we don't turn on the red LED. However, if the C flag is clear, then we don't skip the next command and we do turn on the red LED. The next block of code is identical except it handles the green LED. OK, now we need to add subroutines to set up our different colors. So let's begin by creating a header for the next routine and we'll name it LED Color Red. This routine just copies the label values into the registers we are using to keep track of when the red and green LEDs should be on and off. OK, now let's just copy this whole routine down and change all of the reds to green. And we'll do the same thing for our orange code and our yellow code. OK, now let's get our main routine set up to demonstrate the colors we've selected. So add the following code. OK, let's take a quick look at the routine. First we call LED color yellow to set up our registers with the color codes to generate yellow on the LED. Next we call LED update to update the LED. The loop here is just a time killer to keep the current color on the display visible for a few seconds before moving on to the next color. You'll also notice the go to dollar sign minus two and the go to dollar sign minus four. This tells the program to jump backwards from the current program counter address minus two. You can also use the plus sign to jump forward in the code. This method is only recommended when doing very short jumps. If you're doing a jump that's more than a few commands away, it's recommended that you use a label instead. OK, let's go ahead and copy this block of code so we can get the other colors to show and change yellow to red then green, and finally, orange. OK, let's compile the code and program the microcontroller. Now, isn't that a beautiful thing? The LED first goes yellow, then red, then green, and then orange-yellowish. OK, if you look over the code, you'll notice that we never stop refreshing the display. In fact, it's important that the LED be constantly refreshed to properly display the selected color. It's by turning the LED on and off at a high frequency that we are able to generate the different colors. If we just turn them both on and leave it at that, we'd only be able to generate red, green, and that orange yellowish color. To save some time in getting the colors right, I used PaintShop Pro to help select the values for the red and green LEDs. The color picker window generates a lot of different color information, and one of these is the HTML code for use in web pages. And what's nice about this is it gives us a real good starting place to tweak the values in our program. The code here consists of three bytes. The first is how much red to add, the second is green, and the third is blue. Since we only have a bicolor LED in this lesson, we are only concerned with the first two bytes. OK, so to add these values to our program, we need to note the first four digits, and in this case, that's FA81. Next, we come back to the header area of our program and enter the values in the color defines. For this example, we'll modify orange. So change the value for the red LED from B5 to FA. By using this method, you can experiment with generating different color combinations, and this process can be easily expanded to work with RGB LEDs. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and be sure to check out these other assembly language programming episodes. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos.